Hi, Dr. Ken Meyer here with you. We're going to be looking at connecting resistors, capacitors and inductors in a series AC circuit. The purpose of this quick little video is to learn to identify the components we're going to be using in AC and in particular how we connect them in series so you have some idea as we come along to our experiments how we're going to be about uh, connecting up our components and interpreting circuit diagrams that go with them so let's get underway you can see here here's our basic components we have the first thing we're going to look at is the power supply you can see my cursor there and this is simply a 240 volt transformer which simply reduces the voltages down to 12, 15, 17, 20, 24, 27 and 30 volts and we have a common. So again with AC it's important to realise that there's no actual polarity. We have a common or what's often called the neutral which is indicated here by the black terminal and then the red terminals are our different supplies. We then have a switch box, in this particular switch box, we have two switches, we're only going to be using the bottom switch, and we connect to that using a red terminal and a blue terminal. Then over on my little uh, practice board, I have an inductor, a capacitor, and a lamp that we're going to use as a resistor. You'll notice each of these are then connected to four millimeter terminals. They've got red and black indicating the uh, connections to the terminals. The red and the blacks are irrelevant because AC components don't have polarity. So it's just start and finish, start and finish, start and finish, really. So there's our basic components, power supply, a switch, so we can turn different parts of the circuit on and off, an inductor, a capacitor, and a lamp as a resistor. So they're the basics. So circuit skills is the next thing we need to talk about. And the first circuit st skill I want to talk about is component identification. Uh, what is a resistor? What is an inductor? What is a capacitor? Now, component size plays an important part in that. And our inductors are measured in henry's and the inductor we're playing with is a ballast it's normally used in a 240 volt 60 watt fluorescent tube and it's at 13 1347 milli henry's or 1.347 henry's we have a capacitor capacitors are measured in farads and uh, are often measured in microfarads and the one that we're playing with is 10 microfarads. Now resistors come in all kinds of forms, but for our purposes, something that gives us a fair number of watts to play with as far as the resistor is concerned. Resistors are measured in ohms, and the one we're playing with has 14 ohms, so we're simply using an incandescent lamp as a resistor. We're never going to put enough current through it to uh, make it actually illuminate. We're just going to use it as a 14 ohm resistor. Now, what about polarity? As I have just mentioned in the previous slide, AC components don't have polarity. The power supply has a nominated common or neutral, and then we have different tappings for different AC voltages. The AC voltages that we were displaying on the power supply were the voltages, what we call RMS, root mean squared, so that's the effective DC value that that AC supply would produce. And one of the challenges of doing all of this is to make sure we can interpret circuits. And that's the big challenge, to be able to move from a circuit diagram through to physically connecting components together. So that's what this little video is about, giving you the skills to be able to interpret a circuit diagram and then be able to connect the components together as the circuit requires. And to be able to do that, we need to be able to, again, go through a little list here, be able to identify what components are what. What's a resistor? What's an inductor? What's a capacitor? 
And then once having done that, we know what the sizes are. I'm not going to go through the sizes again. And then understanding in AC, there's no such thing really as polarity because AC is polarity is oscillating backwards and forwards. In Australia, that's at 50 times a second. The polarity is changing. And then being able to take, in this case, a series circuit diagram and be able to connect the components in series. So here's our little base series circuit. And you can see here a picture of the ballast. And the first thing we need to be able to identify is here is the symbol for a ballast. So a ballast is just a coil of copper wire normally wound around an iron core. So here we have some loops in our symbol indicating windings and the little bar above it indicates an iron core. So the first step in identifying our components is not only identifying it. This device that I'm pointing at is the inductor, but this is the symbol for an inductor. If we move over now to the center, we have a picture of a capacitor. Most capacitors, certainly the larger ones that can handle uh, voltages of 400 volts plus, normally come in this, what we call this tin can form, because capacitors are normally just aluminium foil wrapped around a dielectric, and the best way to compact that into a small space is to roll it up. So capacitors are often just rolls of aluminium and plastic as the dielectric. Our symbol for a capacitor, you can see here two plates and in the center some kind of dielectric material. In these capacitors the dielectric material is actually a piece of plastic. So we have the plates of the capacitor and a dielectric. So the symbol for a capacitor represents the functionality of what's inside what looks like a tin can. Then finally we're using an incandescent lamp as a resistor. Our symbol for a resistor these days is just a nice rectangular shape with a couple of leads at either end of it. And in this particular case we have a filament. You can just see the filament here in the lamp. The filament in the lamp is our resistor and as I mentioned earlier this just gives us a large wattage to play with. We won't be able to damage it very easily, so it's robust, and it simply acts as a resistor. So we've now identified our components, an inductor, and a symbol for an inductor, our capacitor, symbol for a capacitor, a resistor, and a symbol for a resistor. The next thing we want to do here is show the power supply and we've just got the terminals of the power supply indicated here i've written 224 volts ac and we're connecting in series so this whole video is about connecting components we've identified in series and in this particular diagram so we have a circuit diagram here on the bottom which has symbols and we start with a 24 volt supply and as I said before we have an active and a neutral and uh, let's let's identify those and we can do that uh, just give me a minute and we'll go to our pen option and uh, this would be what we would call the active and we often use a capital A to represent the active and the common terminal in AC, we often call the neutral. And there we have it, an N for neutral. So the next thing we're going to do is, uh, it's not on this circuit diagram, but I've actually in the, uh, in the, um, circuit we're going to physically connect together we're going to include a switch so we're going to uh, put in a switch so I'm actually going to make the active terminal I'm going to put in as a little symbol for a switch and 
Up again, dude. Connecting a switch. So, in our connection diagram, we're going to go through a switch from our active. We're going to go through the inductor. Then we're going to connect the inductor through to a capacitor. Then the other side of the capacitor out to the resistor. And then the resistor all the way back to the neutral. Now, as I mentioned before, AC components don't have polarity. There's no plus or minus, despite the colours that we've used on the actual terminals that you'll see. So really, all we have is a start and a finish. Uh, you might ask which one's the start and which one's the finish. It doesn't matter. We're just nominating starts and finishes. So and in series, all we're doing is connecting a start to a finish, so on and so forth. So there's our starts and there's our finishes. Now you might find this a little bit rudimentary, but I find there's plenty of students who have not been able to uh, comprehend how we move from the drawing of a circuit diagram through to the actual connection of a circuit diagram. So let's move on and here's our first connection. So you can see I've come from the 12 volts on the power supply on this particular occasion and you can see that I've connected a red wire from the power supply to the switch. That's the first connection. Now I'm going to want to connect from the other side of the switch across to the beginning of the inductor. So there we go. We now have a wire that connects our power supply active. We're now in series with the switch and you can see the wire looping down and into the start of the inductor. So, little reminder, all we've done now is we've come from our power supply and we've connected to this point on the inductor. That's all we've done. So we've only connected power supply to the inductor. Now, you can see I've added a blue wire and I've now connected the finish on the inductor through the blue wire to the start on the capacitor. So effectively, I've now got the active of the power supply in series with a switch, in series with the inductor, and I've connected to the start of the capacitor. So we've now come from here at the power supply, we've connected through the inductor and we're now to this point where we've connected to the start of the capacitor. So now with the yellow wire, you can see that I've connected the yellow wire from the finish on the capacitor through to the start on the resistor. So we now have power supply in series with a switch, in series with an inductor, in series with the capacitor, and we've now connected to the start of the resistor. So we've come all the way now from power supply, through the inductor, through the capacitor, and we are now connected to the resistor. Our final step will be of course to now connect the finish on the resistor back to the common point or the neutral here on the power supply. So here's our final circuit. You can see with the white wire I've now connected the white wire through and it's now connected to the common So 
So I hope you've enjoyed our series circuits with Dr. Ken. Uh, nice and simple. Good understanding of how we interpret a series diagram or a series circuit diagram and be able to connect it to our AC components using a inductor, a capacitor and a resistor.